um, you can see the, 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 the growth and um, just how they view real estate and business in general. Right? Um, we want to make sure that everybody who gets on here gets an opportunity, number one, um, learn um, in an environment that's fostering growth and encouraging you guys to ask questions. And then also, um, number two, um, number two, we want to make sure that you guys um, are always learning something new. And I might have to, I just, I just remember it. I'm on that Wi-Fi joint. Let me see if I can connect to my hotspot while we're talking. I don't know. It might kick me off, but we'll see. We'll ride this one out and see how it goes. Um, if it kicks me off, then I'll join through the, uh, my hotspot. But um, real quick, let's just go through the line real quick, especially since we got, uh, we got eight people right now. Um, I think we lost, I think we lost Dina. Um, real quick. So, uh, since I'm just going to go, I don't know if you guys have the same screen as I do, but on my screen, I'm just going left to right. I got crystal in the top hand, uh, top left corner. Uh, let me take you off mute crystal. Um, we're going to talk about the buyers list real quick. Where are we at? Um, we challenged everybody to get 10 new buyers this month. So I missed the call, um, about that one. But I did uh, buy a list from Bridgeport, and I've been reaching buyers on my own. So, so far, I have about, like, 12 buyers that I reached out to. So you added 12 buyers to your list? Yes. Dope, dope. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so you, 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 you met the goal, and you exceeded it. You know, wow. uh, um, you know they're you know, over, overachieving over there. So that's good. So 12, 12 buyers added to your list for, set for January. Yes. Perfect. Can't ask for nothing more than that. Nothing more than that. All right, cool. Um, appreciate you, uh, Crystal. I'm um, put you back on mute. Cat, what's up? Mark, all right, you up, man. Mark, what we got? Hold up. Let me try that again. Mark, what we got? There we go. Nope. Oh, I think you're trying to mute. Okay, you're off mute now, Mark. All right, how you doing, everybody? Uh, I apologize. I haven't been um, a part of the group in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, actually. I took a step away, so this is my first night back. Or, okay. No well, problem. when you open the panel for questions, I do have a, a question I would like to ask you. Okay. All right. Cool. Did have you did you happen to stumble into finding any buyers this month? I know this is your first time back in a minute. Right. Somebody actually called me uh, because I had hung up a banner sign. It's just one of those that was just left over that nobody took down. Uh -huh. And she had called me because I was out of town all last week, and um, she wanted to do a deal, a JV deal. So I'm not going to pass pass up on it. Yeah, I just wanted to know how can I protect myself in this deal without. Um, yeah, well, we'll talk about that um, when we open it up for Q and A. Because this this lesson today, um, we're just going to see where everybody's at, and then we're going to get right into this Airbnb joint, and then we'll be able to open it up after that for oh. question. All right, no problem. Thank you. No problem, brother. All right, I'm gonna put you back on mute, my man. Next is uh, he just hopped on, but he happened to be in the top right hand corner. Siv, what is up? How are we doing on our buyers list? So uh, I went, remember told me to uh, sign up for those uh, RIA meetups? Yep. So I went to uh, one on Saturday and it was, uh, hey. suppose the guy was advertising, oh, this is a RIA meetup, you know, it's just getting to know the community, the people in the community. And um, it was a case study where he had this house and he was doing rehab. He's um, originally had it as a uh, renter. Now he's gonna, I guess the renter went bad, went sour on him. Now he's, he evicted the person, mm -hmm. renovating it, and he's gonna flip it and sell it. But then I'm was standing there. It was like two me and this other guy, and then there was four people that was there. It's kind of fishy. I was like, "What's going on?" And then and then, oh yeah, so you sign up for this program. I don't even know if you heard of it. Renata, Renata Real Estate. Renatus. Yeah. <laughs> so, so okay. So tell me more. I'm sitting there, and start, they're talking and talking. You know, it's just education. It's you know something you can never pass up on. If you educate it, we'll get you in a network of people. It's building a community, and you have all these you know, connections to these type of people. Yeah. So it keeps going and talking about like different things. So he goes, yeah, it's about 20 grand. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, so Siv, um, remember I was talking about the course that was $2,000 that I promised that promised me to learn, teach me wholesaling. That was Renatus. That now, was I've seen people that have really good results with Renatus. Um, and then I hear a lot of people like me that got into the course. They have a 2000, 8,000 and a 20,000. Yeah. The guy was saying the essentials is two thousand. Yeah, which, you know, gives you basically I don't know what it has in it, but the yeah. whole package, the premium is like twenty grand. I was like twenty grand. Yeah, 
So it was it was experience, but I won't, it won't stop me. I'll go another. I'll go to another rear, but not this one, obviously. Yeah, that that's really not a good rear, man. Um, trying yeah. to find a rear where they're not trying to sell you something. Yeah, it was it was kind of fishy because supposedly the guy was there. He lives here. He lives uh, in uh, Rhode Island, and uh, the two guys were supposedly from Florida, and he just happened to fly up. I'm like, okay, where are you from? You're from Florida. Okay, why are you here? Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of fishy to begin with. But try to find, try to figure out. We, we need to get, we need to get those 10, 10 buyers. So I know that was. There are some buyers in Renatus, right? Don't yeah. don't get me wrong. There's some people that actually buy. Mm-hmm. So if you can get some, but, some but it was a good experience this weekend with that. I was like, you know, a good walk through. You know, people that's in my area. Good, good. Awesome. All right, cool. Um, real quick, Bill, where are we at on on, um, on your buyers list? So we're at a total of uh, six. We got um, four high bed. Was I broke it down to um, buy and hold buyer, and then I got. So uh, fix and flip buys. So I got a four buy and hold, and I got two fix and flip buys. Nice, nice. So we got four more to reach to go. Working. Perfect, perfect. Love it, man. Love yep. it. Yep. All right, brother. Uh, Rich, we're going to try to go through this a little bit quicker so we're not taking up too much time. I want to get to this uh, coaching port. Um, take you off mute, Rich. Uh, I mean, how we doing? On, uh, you're good, you're good. You're already off mute. You're already off mute. Okay. Uh, how we doing on buyers? Um, well, what I did was I started uh, – going you know create my create my buyers list from how you showed me um but that's just pretty much as far as i've gotten did you add anybody to that list um i went on to uh zillow and what i was doing was i was pretty much going on to zillow uh researching who had made some who had uh, bought some property looked them up on the um on the um state website and i pretty much got their information and i wrote that down so i think i got like 10 people as far as on my buyers list, they ha- you have their phone numbers or what information? Do you uh, have the them? only the only thing I have is that I saw on there was their name and their address. No phone numbers. So I get it, but that really doesn't help us that much. We really need to get at least at the bare minimum their email address. Okay. But because at the bare minimum an email address, because by the time you send them properties through the mail, like that's that's like just step one. But we need you to get at least the email and preferably their phone, their cell phone numbers, so text message them in properties. Cool. Okay. All right. All right so we'll talk about that. All right. Uh, Dina, I'm going to go, I'm going uh, to put you back on mute, brother. Uh, Dina, I'm going to skip past you, obviously, because um, you're, you're new. You haven't gotten it. You know, you didn't know about this. Uh, Antoine, Antoine, uh, real quick, man. I'm taking you off mute. Um, what we got for buyers for this month? Well, I got um only four buyers, but um so I need six more to go. Okay. Um, I met a guy at the the auction um when um when they had the auction sale um then I got my aunt she's really into looking for homes and whatnot and I got I found two other guy two people reached out to me so I got them on my buyers list perfect. so I need six more. All right, perfect. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. Um, the next person on my list is Sean. Sean, you there? Yeah. What up, man? What's up, man? What country are you in now? Man, I just landed back in the States just now. Just got in the car. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Uh, definitely appreciate your, uh, your service, man, going out there and uh, protecting, protecting and serving. Um, uh, where we at on buyers? Are you, were you able to do anything from, uh, from overseas? Nah, I wasn't really able to do uh, too much. Um, I did... Uh, I did find a uh, interesting uh, uh, Facebook group. It was a buyer's uh, Facebook group where where I was seeing I was actually seeing people putting deals on there and asking for uh, asking for buyers in that in that area. So I have to dig a little bit more to see if it's a an official page and people are actually on that page buying. Nice, nice. Perfect, man. All right, cool. That's good information, man, Bill. Um, thank you for uh, the kind of landlord got six and eight. That's a, that's a, that's a very, good, uh, strategy. very good strategy. See, I learned stuff too. I'm stealing that. I'm not like uh, I came up with it. So that's dope, Bill. Um, Terrence, I know you've only been on for about a week. I'm going to take you off mute here. Um, or at least try to. For some reason, I can't. Terrence, can you hear me? 
Yeah, yeah I'm here. I'm here. Um, do you have anybody on your buyers list, or do you know anybody? That's a uh, nah, man. I'm be honest with you, not at all, man. Okay. I just, I'm. That's the be honest truth. Truth. I apologize about the noise in the background. I'm not a little family gathering, but I just, Fine. you know what I'm saying. All right, cool. All right, no problem, man. No problem at all. We'll get you. We'll get you sped up. All right, cool. Uh, Alex. I am at uh, 11, but only, only, really only four of them I have the full info that I need. So the other seven I need to get uh, the phone number for. Okay. The name and address. Word. Perfect. Okay. At least we know where we're at. We're, we're at four more than uh, we had last month, right? Yes, sir. Perfect. Perfect. Kat, I got your message um, that you, uh, you can't talk, but you can, you can hear uh, Latasha, I'll take you off mute. Um, try to, I don't know why some people I can take off mute and others I can't. Latasha, can you take yourself off mute? Can you do that? I don't know if you can or can't. No? Okay. And I'm sorry to, hey. oh, there you go. Sorry, I'm at the gym. Oh, okay. All right. Got you. Got you. Um, how, how many buyers were you able to add to your list? Um, I have two that are like fully vetted, meaning I've talked to them about what they want, what kind of properties they're used to picking, okay. um, where they get their money from, kind of the more in-depth in questions. Okay. Gotcha. Right, so we so added two, solid two, ones. two to our buyers list this month. So let's try to have this. I know we're getting a little late in the as well. We got 10 more days or so, 11 more days. Let's try to, let's try to close out everybody, not just you, but everybody, if you haven't gotten 10, let's uh, at least try to close out our 10. So good job. It's two more than we had last month. Perfect. Uh, I believe the phone number was, is that still? I don't know. The phone number's changed. Just took you off a of mute, whoever that phone number is. That's April. Yeah, okay. I thought it was. And yes, I was able to add to my buyer's list. Look at you. Being I'm up to way. about 20 total now. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, I, I cheat. I go on Facebook. <laughs> oh, so you just be cheating, cheating. That's all right. As long as they pay. <laughs> as long as they pay. Right. It's a great resource. Hey, that's what's up. That's what's up. So congratulations to that. Um, Thank you. And uh, let's, uh, let's, if you haven't gotten your 10, Let's finish it up. Let's get our 10. Um, it's only going to help you in the long run. It's just a little extra work. We got, we got about 11 more days. So we just need an 11 day push just to get that, um, get that, get our, our buyers up. So, all right, cool. Um, man, we're going to get straight to the point on this one. Um, we're going to go and um, go on to. Let's do Zillow. Um, so today, um, I'm always, always trying to figure out, uh, different ways, uh, of doing things different. Like today, Bill just pointed something that's been in my face the whole time. Go to section eight.com and just look at tired landlords, start calling them. Right. Like that's easy. Right. Um, so we're always, always learning, uh, always trying to figure out ways to do things differently. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's not better. Maybe, um, maybe whatever we show you today, you might look at it and be like, that's, you know, oh, I don't really, you know, I don't really like that. But in that process of you not liking it or just trying it and not working for you, maybe you find um, a better way of doing things. And so I'm going to show you guys um, what I'm working on. Um, I'm really going to try to turn this thing into a complete business on its own. Um, <clears throat> and so... And I, I, I know it can be done because I know people that are doing it and making more money than I'm doing, charging more money than I'm doing, I'm charging. So um, we're going to talk about um, Airbnb and how we can wholesale it. It's not really wholesaling the Airbnb because we're, we don't actually um, um, own or that person is not really going to own the property unless you find a wholesale deal specifically for that. But how you can literally... Uh, find Airbnbs and ways that you can find Airbnbs for people, how to price them, 
um, how to structure it without having to use any of your money, like all free resources. Um, and so this is something that's working. I'm not, this is not, I'm not just, uh, I wanted to wait on this because I wanted to be able, be able to provide, um, you know, like some real feedback from it before I, I brought it to you guys. So without further ado, we're going to run right into this bad boy. Um, as, as you guys know, uh, the, 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 basically, you know, anybody who's anybody in real estate is, is predicting that in 2020, if not late, late, uh, 2019, we're supposed to see a little housing uh, bubble, right? And so in preparation of that, I'm talking to buyers. Um, I'm finding buyers are tightening up. Um, they don't want to spend as much or they want a bigger profit margin. Um, so I wanted to start creating and finding different ways that I can service my current buyers, but also, excuse me, also service buyers that might not have be in the game right now. And so I want you to kind of put your fit, your, your, your wholesaling hat, um, kind of like not all the way off, but kind of like, you know, to the side a little bit because you're going to be doing this, but you're also kind of really going to be finding um, um, being almost like a, um, a, a real estate agent, if you will, but specifically for rentals. Okay. Now don't worry, you don't have to get a real estate license. Um, but that's the kind of viewpoint I want you to kind of look at it. All right. So it's going to be part wholesaling flipper part, um, part real estate agent. So we're going to go to Zillow. Um, obviously everybody knows free resource. Um, we're going to click off of everything. The only thing I want right now is that purple or is that pinkish purplish colored dot, right? That dot that says for rent. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and type in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, now well, I don't see, you gotta pay attention. Sometimes Zillow just gives you stuff that you don't want. So let me click this off again and then just put for rent. Okay. Um, now this is really going to depend on your market, right? What I want you guys to understand is this. I need you to understand what the mindset is of someone who's doing an Airbnb. Okay. Um, an Airbnb is not just a hotel. It's not just a place to stay. A lot of people just, they, they don't get this. This is super, super important. It's not just a place for you to, for you to lay your head and you go out and party and you just come back and stay at the Airbnb. That's not what Airbnbs are about. Airbnbs are about experiences. So a little while ago, Airbnb rolled out like their experience package where you can do an Airbnb, but then you could also find, you know, the nearest skydiving adventure place or kayaking place or the, the best bars in town, the best places to eat. They put all that into their app. You, ha you guys have to have to be in touch with this stuff. If you don't have Airbnb, download it download it tonight. If you don't have Turo, download it, download it tonight. You have to be in touch with what's going on in this marketplace, right? So you can, you can grab market shares before other people do. Okay. Um, so Airbnb is about an experience. And what you want to do is you want to be in an area where people can enjoy an experience. So if, meaning that if, if, if I have to pick a place to place my Airbnb, I'm not going to place it um, in a in the country somewhere, unless there's a lot of things going on in that area, right? Most of the time, people are going to want to experience things in the city or close to the attractions. Okay, so knowing your market is huge. Is huge. All right, knowing your market is huge. Um, <clears throat> I just want to make sure I'm still live here because you know my 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 internet be acting up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here in Atlanta, and I just know. Uh, some of the nicer neighborhoods. I know some of the neighborhoods where, um, like, where a lot of tourists are going to want to go. If you are part of any part of the country, you know where the tourists want to be at. You know where you know higher you know frequency of people are always going to be at. Just when you go to anywhere USA, whatever city that is, whatever town that is, go type it into your your search bar and then zoom into where those areas are. So. I know, for example, Atlantic Station, I just happened to see it, this area right here, um, it's called Atlantic Station, right? So Atlantic Station is this area right here, um, and well, really this area right here, this orangish looking colored area. But all these areas around here work perfect for Airbnbs because people wanna come to this neighborhood, 
there's it's like an attraction here. There's things that are always happening. There's shops, there's stores. People want the experience. You have to understand that they're going to want this experience, but they're going to want to be able to, uh, they're going to bring other people there with it, with you, and they don't want to travel like terribly far to experience this stuff. So they're experiencing the neighborhood, but they're also experiencing the house. So sometimes, when, especially when people come on vacation, they're able to experience a house that they couldn't, they can't afford, or they're able to experience a decor that they couldn't afford, or a lifestyle they couldn't afford. So you, that's what you want. You're going to play on, upon, okay? So once I get into this area, I can see uh, we have a good amount of variety here, okay? Let me move my picture over here. So I'm here, and I can kind of scroll through and see what we have available. One of the things I want you to change up here, I don't care about your price, right? You leave that to minimum and max. Bedrooms, I don't care. I want zero plus. That means it's gonna give you from zero to 100,000 bedrooms, who cares? Um, what I want, which is already here, which is good, I want house, apartment, condos, and townhomes. Now, <clears throat> I might not be able, I might not want um, the apartments if, they, if they're, and this is judging upon your area, right? I might not want apartments um, because a lot of apartments will, they, they frown upon commercial leases or subletting, okay? So maybe you want to take that check off, and that's going to leave condos, townhomes. Some condo, most condos associations will, um, will say that they don't want you to um, sublet, right? Um, but you can luck up, so I'll leave that check marks in there, right? Because it's just, an, it's, just, it's just one other option for me. But houses, condos, and townhouses, probably knock off the, the, the apartments there, okay? And for more, I don't care about any of this stuff, whether or not it's been on Zillow, how many days, I don't care, right? I just wanna see what's currently available, right? All right, so once I've done that, you can do two things on Zillow. You could either go through the map and see, so if I, if I know I wanna be really close to this area, because this is where all the attractions are, and I wanna be really close to this area, then obviously I can use the map, right? If I wanna see what the houses look like, you know, just a glimpse, I can go through here, okay? So let's say something like this one, let me see. I know it's not on your end, but on my end, okay. So you see this house right here, you see it, it pops up as this one right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. When I hover over it, it, it brings that little picture up in that same area that I just showed you. So we can tell that it's, it's close to here, but it's not really as close as some of the other ones. But that's fine, right? As long as it's in that general area, okay? So let's say I pick this one here, and all I want to do is just kind of go through it, see what it looks like on the inside. This is actually a you know a single family home, which is which is good. Um, look at the pictures. Make sure it's not something that's crazy, right? This right here, uh, the kitchen doesn't look too great, um, but the rest of the house looks pretty decent. The rest of the house looks pretty decent. All right, you can close this one out. So once I see this area, all right, and I got an, I got a feel. I got eighteen hundred. I got thirty two hundred. I got sixteen. Um, I got two thousand one hundred. Let's see what this two thousand one hundred one looks like. Oh, this is perfect. This one right here is perfect. Actually, I know this building right here. Yeah, this is a good one right here. So for two thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars, you could rent this. Okay. $2,125, you can rent this. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to airbnb.com. Okay, so I'm going to type in here Atlanta. And what I want you to do is I want you to first look at your weekend prices, okay? So I'm not going to do this weekend in Atlanta because this is Super Bowl weekend. So you're going to get some, you know, prices that are super, super inflated. So I'm going to go to the next um, weekend. So the weekend, obviously, are the times where you're going to get the most bookings. So I'm going to go from checking in on Friday and checking out on Sunday. Okay. And we'll put um, two adults and leave everything else open and hit apply. I normally do this on my phone. Um, but you can do this from anywhere, right? So here's what, here's what we got. We got a whole bunch of stuff. Ponce Market is another area in, in, in Atlanta that's, that's a pretty a dope area. But really I want, what I want you to do is just like you did over here on um, using the maps, okay? 
I want you to go ahead and do the exact same thing over here using Airbnb. And we're just gonna zoom in. Oh, come on. We're gonna zoom in here to we get to the same area of Atlantic Station. I don't know why this is taking so long to react. There we go, Atlantic Station, you can see it's right here. And we're gonna zoom in a little bit more. All right, so we can see this general area right here, right? This matches up with this area right here, okay? We're a little bit farther out, but that's okay. Now, I wanna to go to my filters, okay? So go to more filters. What I want is the full house. So I want a full house. I don't want to see pricing on renting a room out or a hostel type of a situation. You guys ever seen hostels? Like when you especially go overseas, it's one room with a whole bunch of people in it. They live in bunk beds. We don't want that. That's on here. So make sure that you don't look at those prices, okay? So a hostel, I mean, I mean a, a full house. That's all I want right there. Now I'm going to, let me see, is this in the way? Here, there we go. Show 111 homes. And now we can just basically go through this neighborhood. And this thing is never in the right spot. Just, uh, we can go through this neighborhood and we can see we got 100, 194, 75, 68, 105, 75. Probably if I zoomed in a little bit more. We got 1,000, 373, 429. Um, so 2,000. So this area right here is obviously one of those hot neighborhoods, right? Where we're gonna, we're gonna have a whole bunch of options and that's what we want. 2,000 I think is probably a little much, especially since this is not, that's normal for Super Bowl weekend, but not normal um, on a regular weekend, right? But all I'm looking for is I'm trying to find like the average. I probably would not count this $2,000 um, one unless you plan on renting something like that. That's a pretty dope house though. Um, but 373, 194, 100. This is your competition. This is your competition. So we're gonna take, and I'm gonna do this here on the phone here. we we'll take some, um, so we gotta take the average 100 plus 194 plus 373 that's 667 divided by three we're at like 222 uh, per night on average okay 222 per night on average now what you want to do is you want to kind of go through these homes and see what type of what, what are they providing right so i'm just flipping through the pictures here see what kind of home it is whether or not it's it is a single family home or is this like a small a uh, small apartment okay you want to eat, compare apples to apples so this one right here is probably, this is right here at Atlantic Station. This is probably as close as possible to what we have. And I know for a fact we can beat that 100. We should probably be somewhere between 100 to this uh, 194. This looks like an actual single family home. This one right here. Yeah. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take, um, that average was 222. And we're going to times that times, um, we're going to times that times um, eight. Okay. So there's basically eight um, days that are weekend days that we're billing for throughout the year. I mean, throughout the month, right? So there's two, two days during the weekend and on, on a hotel or our Airbnb, weekend that's friday and saturday really right because you're checking in on friday um you stay there friday night saturday night you check out sunday okay so really friday and saturday but you go into sunday so two days and we got four weeks so that gives us our eight like prime days per month so we're going to take that eight prime days per month and we're going to times that and that's this particular case i'm going to put that at um i'm going to put that price at what did I say it was 222? I'm gonna go lower, I'm gonna go a little bit lower. I'm gonna go put it at right there, right around 200, okay? So obviously that's easy math. We're gonna do that and it'll be 1600 a month, okay? 
just off the weekends, okay, which is your, your most, uh, your, the time that you're going you're gonna to use the most. Now, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing, and I'm going to um, – where is my – oh, there it is. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to change my dates to weekdays. So I'm going to go Monday through Thursday, okay, and I'm going to apply. All right. Let's see here. Let me get a little more. Man, it's expensive down there, boy. That $1,000, that's crazy. Um, so we're getting a lot of the same prices, believe it or not. We have some down here that are 79 69 348 Is this the same one that we did before? This is the same one. Two guests. This is February. Oh, let me not pick this date. Hey, pay attention to this, guys, okay? Um, obviously, this is, um, this is a, um, a, um, a February 14th. So... Try to stay away from, um, try to stay away from, yeah, Valentine's Day. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Try to stay away from Valentine's Day um, because that will obviously throw your pricing off. Let me go here. 18 to 21st, nothing on that. Day. 18 to 21st is nothing, right? Apply. Let's see if anything comes up. All right. So we got 64 a night, 79 a night, 178. That one that was 348 or whatever, now is 178, 199, 57, trying to find. I guess I could probably still use that exact same one as my gauge. Where'd it go? And all I'm looking for is something that's kind of similar in size to the one that I have. Um, let's see what this looks like. A single family home. It looks like a single family home. The last one I was looking at was a town home. Let's just see if we could, uh, oops, I didn't mean to click that. Let me go back to this one here. Nope. All right. We're gonna go back. We're gonna go back to I'm trying to find one that's decently priced, so you can get. I'm gonna pick this 178. Pick this 178. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna take this 178, and because my house is in a better position, this, the 178 down here, that one I picked that was a townhome is like somewhere right around in this particular area. I'm gonna go with that 178 and we're gonna go ahead and do a, let me share my screen. We're gonna go ahead and do um, our weekdays. So now we got four weekdays um, that are really uh, you know available Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay, now your average Airbnb. Make sure you guys write this down. Your average Airbnb is going to rent out for about twenty days, twenty to twenty-one days. If you become a super host, you can you can get definitely get twenty-one days. Now, out of this eight, out of those eight days, I'm sorry, out of those twenty days, we already spent eight on the weekends. All right, so which means we have twelve left. So we have 12 left, four weeks, I'm mean, sorry, um, four days per week times three. That gives us 12 days, okay? So you don't want to live in a false reality and think that your Airbnb is going to get rented out every single night, right? But you can count on about 20 days, especially if you do it when, I, when I'm showing to you, okay? So we're going to do 12 days, and we're going to times that time. What was that, 171? I think it was, let's just call it 170. Okay, we're gonna do 170. Now, let me see what that is. 170 times 12, we're looking at 2040. So, this is gonna equal $2,040. Okay, 
okay? And then we, time, and we add that up, plus 160 equals 3640. Uh, 3640, okay. So if we go back to our, um, our, uh, our, our um, Zillow map here, we can see that our rent is 2100. Okay, so hold up, let me see something. Oh, oh my bad, I forgot I shared my screen and there we go. Can you guys see my screen now? Can you guys see the Zillow? I can't see anybody. Yes, okay, cool. All right, so so we're at that 36, what did I say it was? 3640. We just got to subtract now our 2100. And our 2100, that gives us $1,540. $1,540. So why is this important? Let me show you here. Okay, we're at our 2100. 1,540. Now, how, how many of you guys been through um, the module where we calculate ROI, right? We figure out what ROI is, okay? Because this is all well and good. Like, this is a good investment for you, right? If you wanted to do this, you could go ahead and get into this, um, this rental for 2,100 a month. You're going to do 2,100 probably plus security. All right, so you're going to be in it for 4,200. And then you're going to spend about five, maybe $6,000, excuse me, on furnishing. I know people say, well, what? $6,000 only on furnishing? That's crazy. Yes, $6,000 on furnishing, right? Nothing more than that, okay? You're going to be all in it for about $10,000. You can do that using a lot of free stuff, Facebook marketing. Um, if, if you guys only knew what I paid for the furnishings in my, in my apartment, um, I got everything in here for probably less than 1000 bucks, right? Um, finding stuff on um, Facebook marketing, making certain things, doing things that are just uh, like um, that are uh, that look like fantastic, like you spent a whole bunch of money on them, but being very, very picky on what you where you go to buy it. And we're going to talk about where to go buy it. OK, but um, this right here is a pretty dig doggone good return. Right. Fifteen forty. You spend ten thousand dollars. Let's just say you spend ten thousand dollars once again twenty one hundred to get in plus plus the security deposit plus you spend another six thousand dollars or fifty eight hundred dollars to get it um, furnished you're in it for ten and you're making one thousand five hundred forty Airbnb it takes I think three percent uh, of this so you're not getting all of this back and you have to pay utilities but by the time you're all said and done you're not paying for cleaning because cleaning is going to be added into this price so that price of 170 or 200 there's also about a hundred and fifty dollar cleaning fee if you guys have ever rented an airbnb um you know what that means if you haven't i highly suggest that you rent an airbnb before you do this okay because you'll see it. it still comes out to be a great deal and people are normally if it's priced fairly people are more than well more than happy to pay that price but um you'll probably walk around, walk away with about 1200 bucks uh, i'm sorry a thousand to 1200 bucks depending on utility usage and everything else Okay, so really good, really good investment. Okay, but I want to show you how you can use this information and make more money. Okay, you guys, can you see the, uh, the whiteboard here? You guys see the whiteboard? Okay, perfect. All right, so we know that in order to calculate return on investment, we need to know how much the all in investor is. Now, you guys have done this. If you're in the course, you've done this when it comes to buy and holds, you've done this with um, fix and flips. We're going to do the exact same process now with Airbnbs. So what we do, what I do is I charge in this particular market 14K. Okay. Now I know there's a guy in, I heard, I heard there's a guy in um, South Florida. He charges $10,000 just for him to do the work. Okay just for him to do the work and then furnishing it and getting into it is a, whatever it costs. I do, I kind of do it a little bit differently. I charge 14,000. Okay. So I'll charge someone 14,000. They'll go ahead 
And what I'll do is I will go ahead and find these, um, these, these type of properties. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. It's very, very simple. It's a lot easier than wholesaling, all right? And my whole goal is to get, into, get them into their property for less than 10,000, $10,000 or less, excuse me. So if I can get them into their, this property for 10K, that means there's an extra 4K left over, right? That goes into my pocket. Okay. Okay. So 4,000, I'm making $4,000 off of doing this work. And really guys, really all I'm doing is finding the properties and doing some math because I know that if I can take this, right, if they're all investment, all in investment is $14,000, right? If they're all in investment is $14,000. I'm going to go ahead and um, take their monthly of 1540, And I'm going to times that, oops, there we go, times it times 12. Let me break out my calculator here. I'm not good, at, good to do that on, in my head. And that comes out to, that comes out to $18,480. Okay. So $18,480. Here's a good thing. Here's, here's a good thing that kind of part of the year that I forgot to mention. We're in February or that, that example I gave you was February. So February is, besides it being Super Bowl uh, in any other state right now or any other place, February, January, February, March are like the slowest points of the year for Airbnb. In April, and it's not just, I say Airbnb, but it's not just Airbnb. It's Airbnb, VRBO, home away from home, all these places, that, that's like the slowest part. Um, January, February, March. These, this is, and I got this information from a uh, super host, a person that manages Airbnbs. Um, and this is what he does for a living. And so he's managing my Airbnb. He's going to be managing my client's Airbnb as well. Um, what he's taught me is that in April, like the money for like corporations, when they start to send people out on trips and they do these uh, cause we all, we're only think, we're saying Airbnb, but really what we mean is we mean the, the commercial rental space. Okay. That's really what we mean. So on commercial rentals, uh, especially for corporations, they start to send a lot of their people out at the end of March, April timeframe. You got spring break, end of March, April timeframe. Um, you got all the spring concerts that are coming in. You got the summer concerts, you got the attractions that are, so from like April all the way through to about the end of September is like a really, really, really busy time for commercial rentals. Okay. That's where you're going to make, I'm talking about, that's where you're going to make the bulk of your money. This, this 3,600, this 3,640 could easily go to well over four, $5,000 um, during those busy months. Okay. So the good thing is that we're using and we're, we're taking this data off of, um, off of like the slowest part of the year. Okay. So even with that at the beginning of the slowest part of the year, 1540 times 12, you're at $18,480, okay, for the year, right? So now all we got to do is we got to take this number and we divide it by our all-in. Now, mind you, this is gross, but I'm going to show you why we're doing gross here. Divide it by 14,000 equals 1.32, okay? And then you guys know that if you want to, if you want to change this into um, a percentage, we got to move this decimal place over one, two spots. So it's 132% gross. Okay. Gross. Keep that in mind. This is gross. Okay. So if you want to, the reason why we're not doing the net, the reason why we really can't show the net is because what comes out of this, right, it comes out of this 1540, we might be able to show the Airbnb, but if you don't use an Airbnb, then that's not going to be right. But really the biggest chunk that's going to come out of this is going to be your utilities. And so without knowing your utilities, there's really no way of giving a good accurate net. You can guess, we could say it's going to be, you know, $400 a month. We could say it's going to be $200 a month. It's going to depend on so many different things how well is the place insulated? What type of home is it? Is it a two-story home, single-story home? Is it a brick home? Is 
all these things are going to determine whether or not this is going to be, um, you know, your utilities are going to be $150 a month for a really, really, uh, um, you know, um, high energy efficient place, or your utilities are going to be $500 a month. We don't know. But we do know that even if you went, even if you cut this thing in half, if you cut this thing in half and came in with 17, whatever that is, you're going to get half of this percentage, which is way better than any rental that you're getting out of there. You guys understand this, right? So what we're providing here is we're providing an alternative for people who don't want to get into flips, fix and flips, right? They're scared of those. We're providing an alternative for people who want, who don't want to deal with like the headache of having a long-term tenant. Okay. They have a long-term tenant and they don't pay. Then you got to go through the eviction process and the whole nine yards, right? Here, this is uh, you know, a contract to contract. So whether or not they're staying there for a day or they're staying there for, you know, three months. Okay. It's a lot different, a lot easier to get them out, out of this more operating almost as like a hotel. Plus here's the benefit. Here's the benefit is that if I'm renting this place and the, um, you know, a hurricane comes through or a tornado and it rips off the roof, do I have to worry about that? No. Right. The landlord does. If the furnace breaks or the, the boiler breaks or the hot water heater, um, I'm, it's probably my best interest to front the money up front because the quicker I can get this thing up and running, the quicker I could uh, rent it out. But at the end of the day, someone else is going to go ahead and um, um, where's the 21 is coming in from again. Okay. I, I talked about that. Um, someone else is going to pay um, for or reimburse me for fixing that hot water heater. Okay, this 2100 right here, Siv, this 2100 is what you're talking about. This is based off of, um, this is based off of, remember on the Air, I'm sorry, on the, uh, on the Zillow app, um, I showed you that we found a property that was in that same area, and that's, this is how much the rent was for that particular area. So I, what I did is, all I did is I, find, I found an area that um, I liked, that I, that I know is a, a hot area where our tourists are always, always, always coming, like this place is always going to be rented. Um, I looked at a place that I liked. I found what the rent was, which in this particular case was 2100 And then I went to Airbnb to find out what are places renting for that are like that, you know? And that's all I did, okay? Cool. Um, so we're getting, um, um, we're getting $4,000 in this particular case, $4,000 for finding this. Now the person only has to come out of their pocket 14 k We've talked about creative ways of finding people with money. Maybe, maybe some people have, you know, 14, 15, 20,000, $30,000 in their account. Maybe some of them, they have it there. They don't know they have it there. Maybe it's in the means of a pension fund or a 401k that they can um, draw down on because I guarantee you their, their pension or their 401k is not getting 132%. Okay. They're not getting 60%. They're not getting 50%. They're not getting 30%. So when you show them this, you can show them a, a method of way they, the way that they can, you know, um, do better in, the, in, in this market than in the stock market, right? And, by, and for doing that, you get 4,000. So let's get down to the work of this. How do you make this? So we got the idea of it. We got, how, we got the idea of how do we research whether or not this is going to be a good buy for our, our people. Let me show you how easy this is for you guys to find this. So if you guys are doing wholesaling, you know, one of the big things is, man, I got to find, um, I got to go through, I got to drive for dollars. I got to look for this person, look for that person, which is all well and good. And you make $10,000 or like Ramon did make $8,000 like Zenobia did make $12,000. You know, uh, you can do those things and that's cool, right? Here, you're not making that $10,000. For me, I'll make $4,000, but let me show you how easy it is for me to do this. I just go here. And of course, this is in the way. I'm going to scroll down. Guess whose number is there? Look at Tom. I like Tom already. Okay, he's got a nice name. All right. Tom's name is right here. And Tom's number is right here. All right. I ain't got to skip trace nothing. So th this is what this means. Let me, I let me just go. Because I, 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 when, I, when, I uh, when I talk to you guys, sometimes I like to look at you. Let me look at your face. Um, so uh, listen to what I'm saying, man. This is nothing but a numbers game now. Like this is literally just going on Zillow and just calling every single purple dot to see if they're interested because you're going to have a lot of people that don't want to do that. They're going to say, no, I don't want to do commercial rentals. I just want to do a straight lease. And you can incentivize them, right? You can say, listen, I know you're asking 2100 
How about I give you twenty two hundred? I'm give you two hundred. I'm give you hundred dollars more than what you're, you know, what you're currently asking for. That's a way to incentivize them, right? Number one, you're not spending that money, right? It's coming from your client's money, right? But your client is getting such a great return, they're not going to care about spending an extra hundred bucks, right? Because there's nowhere they can get a hundred and thirty two percent gross return. Okay, so. Your buyers that I'm encouraging you guys to find, they're going to be looking for alternative ways to, to, to capitalize, to, to move money, okay? These are one of the ways they can move, they can use their money more efficiently and, and give themselves monthly uh, profits, month after month, okay? So um, all you have to do, guys, is go through this thing and call those people. Once you call them, and once you go on there, you have all the information you need. All you're going to do is just introduce yourself. Let people know that you're interested in coming by to see the property. I, what I, the, the, um, not, not my own personal one, the one I found for a client. What I did is I went there first. I didn't tell them over the phone because over the phone, I'm just a voice, right? I'm just a voice on a line and they can easily just hang up, right? So I like to get on the appointment, go there. And once I'm there, once I'm there, then I introduce them to the concept of, of not Airbnb, not VR, VRBO, but, um, but commercial leasing, commercial rentals. And the way I'll explain it to them is this. I say, listen, guy, um, um, you know, listen, Mark, um, yeah, man, I really love the property. I'm actually here on behalf uh, of a client. Um, he or she couldn't make it today, but they're definitely going to want to come out and see this property. It's my job to kind of come out and scope the property and see if it's a good neighborhood, see if it, if it's going to be a fit. Because what we do as a company is we provide commercial rentals for corporate executives, um, people that are just coming in and out of town, um, you know, some people that need a, uh, a place to stay and they might need it for a day. They might need it for three, four months. Um, a lot of times the corporate exec executives, if they're here for a conference, they'll want to be here and they want to have a nice place to stay. And so that's what we provide. That's the service we provide. And we want to let you know that ex that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be renting this property from you. You're going to get your money on time every single month. Um, but we are going to be renting it out to, um, uh, uh, corporately. All right. And do you have, is there a problem with that? Are you okay with that? Are you okay with receiving your rent? Um, on time every single month. Some people are going to say, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But then there's going to also be oh, some people that are going to say yes. So what you have to do is figure out how many people you got to call to say, to get them to say yes. It's not as hard as wholesaling. Trust me, it's definitely, the ratio is a lot better than you trying to find someone who's going to sell, uh, sell them, sell you their property um, for pennies on the dollar. Okay. Because these people want to rent their property. They're, they're, they're placing their stuff out there because they want to rent it. What you got to make sure is that you're not contacting home, um, like apartments, like apartment complexes, only people who own their properties. So if they own the condo, not meaning that they don't have a mortgage, but like, it's not, you know, you know, some, 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 um, apartment complex that owns the property. Okay. So as long as you have that, then call those people and just go through those numbers over and over and over again until you find someone who says yes. So hopefully this is helping you guys um, help you uh, generate other ways of making money besides just wholesaling. It's wholesaling kind of, but we're not really selling the house. We're just doing the legwork. Really, we're just calling people and then getting someone to say yes. And once we do that, then we connect the dots between our person, our investor who's ready to go and, and them. You can also, if you decide to do it, it's up to you. You can also be the person to manage that, which if you're going to manage it, you're going to probably going to take about 15%. Um, if you don't want to do that, that's going to be up, up to your investor. Um, but you can also find managers that will invest. I mean, that will manage your properties. Like for my Airbnb property, I'm not going to manage it myself. I'm paying um, this guy 15% to manage my property. If that's the case, then you need to take that into consideration to their ROI. Okay. Um, be truthful, be upfront with them so they know exactly where their money's going. They'll trust you with more money, right? All right, so I've been rambling on for a while. Um, anybody got any questions? Any questions on this? Tommy, real quick, um, before uh, I jump on, I sent, I sent you this text. I sent you the text for the call tomorrow. Um, so today, tomorrow will be our first official joint call, morning call, 8. 15 a.m. 
At what time? 8.15 a.m. 8.15 a.m. 8.15 a.m. Like we said before, uh, we'll bring you guys some more value. So um, you'll be able to jump on Dave's call um, at 8.15 a.m. Uh, talking about entrepreneurship um, and uh, becoming, you know, a better person, really. So um, I'll, put that, I'll put that into the, uh, the Facebook group um, and I'll probably send out an email as well. Cool. Crystal. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Dave was rude. Dave was rude. It's a, so like when we um so when I sign a property and they say yes, so it's kind of like wholesaling because I'm gonna give it. I'm still gonna sign a contract. So here's yeah here's here's the part. You can't assign them um that contract the way you would do normally do that. They are essentially are going to pay you. Um, and they can do this a couple different ways. Essentially, with their, for me, the way I have it set up, they're going to pay me fourteen. Um, they're going to pay me four thousand dollars to do this. Okay, the to keep it smooth and clean. If you go to rent a place, if you Crystal are going to go rent a place, you are going to go there and you're going to write them the check for your first and your security deposit, right? And then they'll give you a time that you can move in. Who's, who's is that? I don't know whose uh, microphone is that. Um, but. Um, you're going to go ahead and do that and then you're going to start moving your stuff in, right? The only thing different that you're going to do is that you're going to get a, four, once you find this, this, this spot for them, right? They're going to give you, they're going to write you a check or however they want to pay you $4,000 in this particular case. Now, maybe your price, maybe you're more expensive than I am. Maybe you say 5,000, maybe you say 2,000, maybe you say 10,000, right? right? Whatever price you feel like you're, you're worth for your time to do this. Um, that's your portion. The rest of it is... Um, them going there, writing their check on behalf of um, their company or their name or however they want to do it, if, they're, if they have a company, and then you helping them with acquiring the, um, the furnitures, and furnishing it, right? By doing this, by doing, that's where your fees are, like, that's where you're, you're making your money as. Like, you're actually going out there doing legwork. You're not just finding the place, but you're also helping them get the place ready. You also help coordinate getting the stuff in there. Like you're not going in there and lifting the stuff for them, but you need to help coordinate that stuff and help them with that whole process. Because these are people that have a little bit of money put aside, right? And they don't, but they don't have the time to do all this stuff. So your but job- Am I responsible for, for them getting a renter? Say that again? Am I responsible for them getting a renter? No, once oh. you're, you're responsible for finding, locating the property, Okay, locating the property, negotiating the terms with whoever owns the property, right? And then helping them with picking out a theme. I really, I really like the theme thing. Uh, um, and and uh, Dave knows this guy. His name is Matty. Um, he will go on his Instagram. It's CEO Matty J. Um, oh, yeah. so follow him. All right. He does a phenomenal, phenomenal job with his places. If you guys are not following, if you're going to do this, Go follow CEO Matty J, M-A-T-T-Y-J. Someone please put his, uh, in the chat, put his, uh, his info. Um, there you go. Appreciate it, Kat. Um, follow him because he does a really phenomenal job on how he, how he makes his places a, an experience versus just a place to stay. He did this, this really dope job with the, uh, with the um, arcade-looking thing, man. Look, I, I really want I just, I want to stay there, and I live, and I don't live, you know, I live close by, right? So um, that's what you want to focus on, and that's what you're going to help your client envision and see, okay? Mm -hmm. And because of that, that's where you're getting your, in my, my case, a $4,000 fee. Cool? Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. All right. Anybody else um, have any questions? I had a quick question. Yep. Um. So basically, are you just doing this with uh, if you're re reaching a person directly, or does this work with like property companies too? No, this doesn't. This doesn't really work too well with companies. Remember, I said that like a company is most of the time they're going to have a no sublet prop um, clause in their um, contract. So you have to find someone who owns a house or a townhouse, um, and they're paying a mortgage right? They, they're paying a mortgage on their house. And if it's a townhouse, you have to ask them, here's your HOA um, uh, not allow or disapprove subletting, okay? And there's ways of getting around that, but it's easier just to find a place that doesn't, that you don't have to worry about those. 
because you want everything to be up because you're providing a professional service. You don't want to do anything kind of like sneakily. I don't, I don't know if sneakily is a word. It's a word today. Um, you don't, you want to do things up front, right? Um, because you don't want their, your tenants or someone who's renting that place getting kicked out in the middle of the night because they weren't supposed to be subletting. So everybody needs to know and, and everybody needs to, to understand what's going on. And you're going, to put, so you're going to put commercial leasing in your rental contract that it's allowed, that commercial leasing is um, allowed on your rental contract. Okay. Cool. Anybody else got any questions? All right. So um, is Dave still on here? Dave's not on here. Dave just left. Um, I was talking about this, this strategy with Dave and what I was doing with it. And he was saying that there was a guy um, that's doing this down in Florida. And he, like I said, he's doing $10,000 for exactly what I just showed you. Um, $10,000 is what he's charging to do this. And people are paying it, right? People are paying it because there's no way that you're getting a return on well, if you spend more money like that, obviously your return is not 132%, but even at, you know, 33%, you know, where, where else are you getting a return like that? Okay. So, um, these are, this is another way that you can earn some money, especially if things start to slow down or you're not seeing, um, uh, like I hear that the market's tightening up. You can always get into and do this real estate thing creatively. All right. I think, um, I think that's it so far for this, unless anybody has any questions. I know, I believe, I think, uh, um, joining Dave. I think Mark has, um, Mark, do you have a question for me? Was it Mark? I can't remember. Was it Alex? Somebody had a question earlier and I said, we can ask it towards the end. If you do take yourself off mute. Hey, Tommy, not to interrupt, but, uh, I have to leave for another call, but make sure you tell everyone about the webinar at nine. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got a webinar at nine. I, I thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, cool. Um, well, I don't know. Someone was talking earlier. I can't remember exactly who it was. Maybe they hung up already, but someone said they had a question about a deal or something that was going on. Um, but never, nevertheless, what I want to do is somebody say something. Hey, Tommy, I got a question for you. Um, so, so last Wednesday I missed the, um, the webinar, um, due to work. I was still at work, um, worked a look kind of late. So I missed the seven o'clock call. Um, the, the information that you went over on Wednesday, I didn't get. So is that something that's still in my, in my uh, modules or how would I, you know, get that information? Check on the, um, I'll see that I put that up. I'll check on the uh, Facebook group. You're in the Facebook group now, right? Okay. Not in the Facebook group yet. No. All right. So yeah, go into the, um, just, if you go back to the email instructions, all you got to do is go, and request entrance, uh, request entry into our Facebook group, and then answered like three uh -huh. questions. All right. If you just if you go to the email you, when you originally signed up, there was instructions there that that you had to do. It's real simple. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. I think um, I think that's about it. And that's about it. So anybody, nobody else has any questions, then we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. Uh, tonight, um, um, as Kat kind of uh, talked about, I'm doing a webinar, um, a wholesaling webinar. It'd be cool. I mean, if you guys want to, you can definitely do it. It's everything that we're going to be talking about is um, stuff that's already in the course. So it's not going to be anything new for you guys. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to obviously get um, – um, we're trying to add people to the group constantly. And so this is just one way that we've been able to, this is our first time trying it, to uh, get people to, uh, to become part of this group, become this part of this family, this E2E family, um, start making some money, really. So um, the uh, webinar is tonight at nine. I'm actually gonna hang up from here, um, grab some to eat real quick, and then uh, just get prepared for that. But uh, you guys are more than welcome to hop on there. It's, about a, it's gonna be about an hour hour and a half long call um, just talking about wholesaling. Um, and then we're going to ask them, just put out the offer there for the so If anything, you guys want to do that? Perfect. If not, um, I appreciate you guys being out here today and love you guys. And let's go out there and kill it. You guys take care.
Hey, Tommy. Yes. Hey, this is Dina speaking. Hey, I yeah. wanted to just ask you real quick, a quick question. I can't see the time. So 